Let's have a session on receivables day. So this is a type of financial efficiency ratio. So receivables days, let's go. So it's how successfully managers are chasing up payments from debtors. Now, debtors, remember, will be from customers, the sales made, but the money is not in yet, so they are a debtor. Now, the formula for receivables days is receivables divided by revenue times by not 100 times by 365 because the answer is in days. Now, the top half of this, receivables, of course, receivables is essentially the same thing as debtors, and debtors is a type of current asset, a short-term thing you own, and you'll find that information in the statement of financial position. Now, the bottom of this is revenue. Now, of course, revenue or sales revenue or turnover, you'll find at the very top of the income statement. Now, let's think about some details within receivables days. So ideally, receivables days, you want them to be smaller than payables days because you want to receive your finances, your cash inflows first before you pay out to your suppliers. So you'd like to have receivables of, for instance, 30 days and payables of, for instance, 40 days because that means there's a 10 day gap between when you've received the funds to when you are paying out to your suppliers on average. And of course, that means you'll be able to accrue interest on that over time because you're having it that cash for 10 days longer. So if we're thinking about receivables days, you want to be receiving your debtors before you're paying your creditors. And the lower the receivables number, the lower the number that comes out of this formula means the better your liquidity situation because, of course, your cash flow is better. And as I said before, you may be able to accrue interest on your money. But it's important to recognise nowadays it's very common for firms to offer trade credit to customers. It's a market employee to try and induce sales from the customer because they're able to afford the product or the service or they otherwise couldn't without the trade credit. But if that's introduced to a business, then that's going to clearly lead to a higher receivables days number because you're introducing the concept of receivables to your business. So it needs to be considered in balance if it's been introduced to a business. The last thing to consider is the higher the receivables days, if it's a very high number, that suggests a cash issue, a liquidity issue, and you may, in that case, need to use debt factoring. Details on that, cards up there. See you at the next sesh.